uh, I, you know, one thing I wanted to note up front is that all of you are here. We're appreciative that you're here testifying today. But Commissioner Goodell, Commissioner Selig, Commissioner Silver, Commissioner Bettman, they were all asked to be here. And leadership does start at the top. And I do, I do think that it's pretty convenient that none of them were able to appear today. And it does say something about where does the level of commitment come? Because um, I think they should all be here today. And while I'm appreciative that you've been willing to appear in their stead, I think that does say something about how big a commitment is there going to be on this. And that does need to lead to the owners as well, who have to take responsibility for what happens here. Uh, I want to associate myself uh, with the comments of Senator McCaskill because uh, you do need to establish an investigative process for these cases that do not result in criminal conviction. And um, this is imperative because you have to hold yourselves to a higher standard. And the bottom line is that in many of these cases, victims uh, are not going to come forward because of the financial pressure that they face, the social pressure that they face, and the terror that they face. But that does not alleviate your responsibility to get the facts, to look at the evidence, and to still impose discipline even if a victim is too terrified to come forward. In the same regard, I wanted to follow up on Senator Klobuchar's questions about the reports of victims who are being encouraged or perhaps uh, discouraged not to come forward, or in the instance that Senator McCaskill gave where one was actually flown to another country. Um, I believe that as you look at your policies, the sanctions should be as severe for this type of witness tampering as it should be for the underlying violent acts. Because that's what this is, witness tampering. And that, if you put those sanctions in place, will make very clear that if someone is a victim of domestic or sexual violence, that neither the coaches nor the players nor anyone else should be interfering uh, with their ability to come forward or interfering with the way that they are able to be safe or the support that they need as victims of, of a crime. Now, I wanted to ask specifically a follow-up question uh, on an issue as I look uh, to you, Ms. Roberts, and to Ms. Patterson. One of the things that I'm concerned about as I've listened to the testimony today is that in terms of the players side of this, that they not hide behind the collective bargaining process or agreement when it comes to basic accountability and basic responsibility for not committing crimes. Because this is what they are, crimes. Uh, crimes of violence uh, against women, sexual violence against women, or as we've seen some instances, violence against children. And so as I look at, I want to use an example, uh, Ms. Roberts, the recent situation of the imposition of discipline against Jeff Taylor uh, on the, for the, who's a Charlotte Hornet player. And I understand he received 24 game suspension uh, for a conviction for domestic violence, for, for beating a girlfriend. And uh, what I saw was the unions complained that that suspension was excessive. The, as I understand it, the player himself has accepted this suspension. And I have to say your response, or the union's response, I don't know if it was yours in particular, um, to say that this was excessive, to me, highlights the problem that we're facing. And uh, it's disgusting to me that you would say that that's excessive. So I want you to address that. Sure. What, what do we do in those situations? Why do you believe that was excessive? And if we're going to get at this issue, this has to be the players and the responsibility of the officials in the league and the owners, and everyone has to have a hand at this. So I'd like to know what, sure. what you were thinking, or not you particularly, but the unions. I'm, I'm happy to answer your question, Senator. And let me, let me be clear. The 
because Players Association was not for one second suggesting that some punishment, punishment was not warranted. Of course it was warranted. And we expected the commissioner to impose punishment, and, and he did. Our position was simply that we have a CBA, which we believed, and we have a disagreement about this, uh, had precedent that in indicated that that was an excessive punishment. The, the commissioner, when he imposed the punishment, acknowledged that it was a significant departure from prior, prior punishments. And so again, our position was that the CBA required us to, to, to collectively bargain if there was going to be some imposition of punishment that, was, that belied the CBA. Having said that, the player was never discouraged from accepting responsibility. It was his desire, his right to grieve or not to grieve. He chose not to grieve. And I said to him in, in, in his face, and I said it behind his back, and I'll say it again, we, we absolutely endorse his decision to take responsibility for what he did, and the matter has been closed. My only point, Senator, is this. While we all agree, and we do all agree, that this is very serious business and we need to take it seriously, we don't believe that we need to, at the same time, abandon due process. And that's the only point. That doesn't mean that 24 games may not be appropriate under certain circumstances. It simply meant that within the four corners of the CBA, and again, we have a disagreement about this, it did go beyond the scope of what was collectively bargained for. But I don't want you, Senator, or anyone to assume that the National Basketball Players Association does not take this seriously. We do. I have spent the last two weeks visiting with nine of my 30 teams. I intend to see the rest of them in the next two months. And every time I meet with them, I make clear to them that we will not tolerate this kind of conduct. It's not the NFL problem. It's our problem as well. And so I don't want my, our position on the, on the Jeff Taylor matter to in any way confuse our commitment to making sure that this thing goes away. And my only final point I'd make is this. No, I'm sorry. You, your time then, is over. Then I guess I won't. Um,